Hey there guys, it's Ali here from M Empire and thank you so, so much for coming back to our YouTube channel. Now, buy to lets are the foundation and cornerstone of the property investment world. Now, most people get confused by whether it's for beginners or advanced property investors, but realistically, buy to let property investment is the foundation throughout the entire process of property investment. In this video, I'll be covering all of the basics that you need to understand for buy to let investment and how to maximize your profit for 2024 and 2023. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ali Monfarad and I've sourced over 40 properties for our investors and have built a successful construction company that carries out the refurbishments, the entire process for our investors and the properties that we source for them. The reason why I say this is not to impress you guys, but to kind of emphasize the fact that if you guys stick to property investment and understand the foundational knowledge that you need to, you guys can have significant amounts of wealth Built. If you're interested about finding out anything about property investment, business mindset, or just general property investment in a whole, then you're absolutely in the right place. So make sure you hit that like button and hit the subscribe as well. So what is a buy to let investment? A buy to let investment is probably the most standard form of property investment that you know. Now, generally when starting out, either you're looking at a flip or a buy to let. Now, what this kind of assists is purchasing property and refurbishing the property and then either renting the property or selling the property. Now, if you would be selling a property, that's a flip. And if you'll be keeping on the property, that's the buy to let model that we'll be discussing today. In this video, I'll be explaining why the majority of people who teach the buy to let model actually get it wrong and why investors should really, really understand the importance on cash on cash return. Now, with a buy to let, you'll be purchasing a property, then you'll be refurbishing it, and then you'll be renting out the property to somebody who will make that property their home. Now what you guys need to understand that generally speaking, the way buy to let properties are kind of shown and presented is that you would originally buy a property with a mortgage. Now what do I mean by that? So getting onto it, the main aspect of buy to let is using leverage. Now obviously when you buy a property, the main benefit of it is that it's an asset backed investment. Now when somebody would lend a property or lend on you, in this instance being for example a bank, when they lend for example, 75% of the loan to value, which is 75% of the value of the property. In this instance, you're getting a increased amount of leverage on your initial investment. So the, what I'm trying to now explain is that the way they kind of present a property, let's say we get a hundred grand property. The majority of people will say to you 25% down, which is a 25% buy to let mortgage. Obviously we're not talking about buying it as a residential purchase because if you are buying a residential purchase, then it's a little bit different, maybe 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% deposit down. But in this instance, we're talking about a general buy to let model. Now they'll explain the fact that you need to purchase a property with 25% down. So for a hundred thousand pound property, that's 25,000 pound down and the rest of the property and the rest of the amount being the 75,000 pounds in this instance is the amount of money that the bank will be lending to you, which will be 75% loan to value. So again, just to kind of briefly explain, loan to value and 75% loan to value means that the bank will be lending to you 75% of the value of the property. And what that means is that you can leverage the amount of money that you'll be putting in, making your return significantly better. But here is where majority of people get it wrong. Now, watching YouTube videos myself and watching other people and being on many, many courses, and what I've come to realize by doing all of these properties myself and doing it for investors, and obviously you can find all of these properties on our website and, and YouTube all documented, well over 40 of them, is that realistically, you should never, ever, ever be buying a buy to let property when you're gonna be doing some level of refurbishment to it with a mortgage in the first place. And you may be thinking, what am I talking about? You know, what, what do you mean? So 100 grand property, do I have to buy it with 100 grand cash? And the answer realistically is yes. Now I can't explain to you why and why you wouldn't be doing 25% down and 75% loan to value, which I'll explain kind of what that means as well. But what basically you kind of need to understand is with a buy to let, the general way of thinking about it is either you're doing it with absolutely no refurbishment or you're going to be adding a refurbishment. So what I'm going to touch on first is a buy to let with no refurbishment whatsoever. Now this is very, very rare to actually find. And if you are actively looking for buy to lets that require no refurbishment, you've got to be making sure that you're finding a property completely with the EPC C and above. And this is a, basically a new certificate that will be coming in. Now, obviously with the EPC, with the EPC legislation, they've actually now kind of scrapped it, but it potentially will be coming back 
Previously, they pushed it back from 2025 all the way up to 2028. But it is something that I would recommend you always buy a property. If you're just buying it without doing refurbishment, buy it with the EPC being a C. Now, reason why is because firstly, lenders will lend more money and better rates when the property's got EPCC. If you're either gonna be flipping the property, the buyer, the end buyer of the property who'll be purchasing the finished product of your flip would be requiring a mortgage and they again will need to have better rates and having EPC up to a C will give them better rates. It's firstly better for the tenants. So in the future, if registration does come, you wouldn't have to worry about then spending money on your property or then being forced to sell the property, which many, many people were forced when they did bring up the registration rules, but now they have pushed it back. So it has kind of calmed down to a little extent. However, what I'm trying to explain is that when you buy a buy to property, if you're gonna be buying it, straight as a buy to let with a mortgage, make sure you're not spending a penny on the refurb. Now I'll get through to exactly why, but just think about it for a second. 100,000 pound property and you find it online, you know, or through an agent or however you, you decide to buy an investment property, let's say the purchase price is 100,000 pounds. Now, you're gonna be requiring a 25% down payment if you're gonna be buying that with a mortgage. So that's 25,000 pounds down. Now again, yeah, you've got, you know, stamp duty legals, you know, all sorts of costs like this that were on top of for the sake of simplicity at the beginning i'll actually explain the numbers further on along down the video uh, all the exact numbers for a vr and a buy to let uh, but just for the sake of this right now that's twenty five thousand pounds down now let's say on that 25 grand that you're putting down you factored in all your you know your rented income and you're thinking to yourself okay these are my expenses with my interest rate uh, you know interest payments and my maintenance my management my void and i'm making a profit of x amount per calendar month and on that profit per calendar month and on my cash invested being that 25 grand i'm making let's say a 10 percent return on investment which i'll explain further along down the video how to actually calculate this now if you're now buying this property but then all of a sudden you need a little bit of refurbishment which is what i see countless times i mean I can't tell you the amount of YouTube videos I watch and, and, and deal sources and sourcing companies that I know that sell these types of deals. And I think to myself, how on earth is an investor truly thinking that this, this, that this even provides a return? I mean, I'm gonna explain now. So that 25 that you're putting down, and all of a sudden, let's say somebody says you need a six grand refurb. Now obviously the property that you're buying with a mortgage is, lived, is livable because it is mortgageable. So you can get mortgage with property because the condition of it isn't too bad. So you're buying that property with a mortgage, but let's say, you know, they say it needs a new, new carpet, new paint, and you know, just a little bit of a touch up, maybe a new boiler, you know, five, six, seven grand worth of spending. But all of a sudden that seven grand worth of spending, you, you're not leveraging that money. That seven grand is not something that you can get 75% loan to value on, if that kind of makes sense. That seven grand that you're spending, <coughs> excuse me, is basically money that is now gone. So, you know, you might be positive on that property, a hundred grand property after all your rental expenses and everything by maybe about 300 pounds per calendar month. Let's say it's giving you something like a three, three grand profit a year, that investment property, that buy to investment property. But all of a sudden you've just spent like seven grand on this refurbishment. You know, the, you know how long that will take just to pay back that amount of money that you just spent on that refurbishment. All your return is wiped away and people don't realize that. Now again, yeah, I understand, you know, capital growth, so on and so forth. But the reality is you need to be looking at your cash on cash return. None of the properties that we source for our investors, we even factor in capital growth. Now again, we buy in amazing areas where capital growth is something that they're aware of and we do explain what capital growth is and you know, the capital growth in specific postcodes and so on. But on an actual return on investment numbers, you shouldn't even be looking at capital growth because that's not cash on cash return, that's potential future uplift which we don't even worry about. Now again, to explain this properly, never ever ever buy a buy to let property and spend money on the refurb in your calculations if you'd be buying it with a mortgage in the first place. Now again, I'll explain why a little bit further on now. So thinking about a property that you've purchased for 100 grand, you put down that 25 grand plus an extra seven grand in fees and so on and so forth. And now you think to yourself, but you know, I've just spent a little bit of money and this property could be worth about 110. 120 maybe, let's say. But then all of a sudden, after that six months, now again, I just wanna emphasize the fact that if you buy a property with a mortgage on it, it will take you another six months of waiting to be able to give that property a refinance by showing the amounts of work that you've done to it. When you come to refinance it, the chances of you now getting downvalued is significant. 
because they, the lenders come and look and say, so how much have you spent on the refurb and what has the refurb done? And if you've only spent a few grand just kind of uplifting the value of the property a little bit, the chances of them now saying, you know what, you think it's worth 110, you bought it for 100, I think it's now worth 90, 95, even though you've spent some money on it, or it's only worth 103,000, or they, they just don't even like, you know, they say it's worth the exact same. You are now stuck in a position thinking to yourself originally that you're buying a property, yep, I'm gonna spend a little bit on the refurb, but in six months time I can refinance and you know it'll be a better return. But in reality, that's not how buy to let property investment works, and that's not how property investing actually works. Please, please, please don't do that. And I'm gonna now explain what you should really be doing when you be buying a prop buy to let property investment. So, as I mentioned, you need to be buying these properties with a cash purchase. Now again, like I said, you may be wondering, cash purchase, I don't have all this money to buy a cash. Well, the answer to that is either you leverage your money so you get other people to give you money to buy that property, or you put down that money yourself, or you you know, you know, you can get friends and family and so on to get that money, or you raise money from investors and so on and so forth. But the point I'm trying to make across is that if you've got a small pot of, let's say, 30 or 40 grand, unless you're gonna be buying a buy to let property that everything is done, it's brand new, it's the end finished product of somebody that is doing what I'm discussing now with EPCC, gas certificates, electric certificates, everything up to date, and it's ready for a tenant for the next few years, only then should you be buying a buy to let property you know, with 25% down. But if you're gonna be buying a property that is, let's say up north or whatever, and it needs still a little bit of work, and you're thinking I'm gonna buy it with a mortgage, spend a few grand on the refurb, and then I'm gonna continue on with it, that is a terrible way to invest in property and to build your portfolio. And in reality, once you put that money there, you're gonna be stuck there for a pretty damn long time to move on to the next property. Take what I'm saying on board and listen to exactly the steps of why I'm saying this to you guys. So, I'm now gonna pretty much discuss to you guys rough numbers of a buy to let property that we have done. Now again, you can find this property on our YouTube actually, uh, a little bit further down the videos, there's a property in Barnsley. We've done multiple properties in Barnsley. Purchase price is around that sort of £60,000 mark. But I'm not going to discuss the exact numbers for it. The only time that you should then be using the bank's money for leverage is after you've carried out the refurbishment works to then pull out the majority of your money, if not all your money. Now, I get it. All your money out deals, very, very hard to come by. You shouldn't get stuck on that. You know, you shouldn't 100% think to yourself, if it's not all money out deal, I don't want it. The majority of the time, you're leaving in quite a decent amount of money in. And in fact, even if you leave almost the same initial amount that you would have left in buying a general buy to let property, the fact that your EPC is now up to a C and all this work has now been done, and then you're going to the bank to get that refinance, mitigates your risk significantly. Just before I go over the numbers of this still, if you're finding this video in any way informative and helpful, just make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. So this is a property that we purchased in Barnsley. We actually sourced this property for an investor of ours and our construction company done the entire refurb. So now I'm breaking down the numbers. The purchase price of this property was 60,000 pounds. Now a 60,000 pounds purchase price, and then we've got solicitor fees, including VAT. So this is another cost that you have to factor in. So that came to 686 pounds. Now we've got our stamp duty, which is 3% of the purchase price. Now again, it varies. I'm not going to go into too much detail about stamp duty. If you're a first time buyer, you know, you're not paying stamp duty. If it's your you know, investment property, you're paying 3% after you get a certain bracket, it changes between you know, 3% and 5% on a certain amount plus a certain number. But again, this is something you can find online very, very quickly just by typing in the stamp duty calculator and it will just spit you out the, the number. But generally speaking, it's 3% of the purchase price majority of the time. So. £60,000 purchase price, plus our solicitor fees, including VAT, and these are exact numbers that have been done. So that's £686. Now again, £686, it's with our solicitors, you know, we've purchased well over 40 properties through them. You know, these prices may vary with your one. So just out of rough number, maybe £686 is a little bit too low for some solicitors, but generally speaking, it's about six to £800 pounds you'll be paying for your solicitors. But again, breaking down these exact numbers, it's £686 for the solicitor fees, then we've got £1,800 for the stamp duty, which is 3% of the purchase price. Now we've got then sourcing fee and full management fee. Now another thing that I wanna kind of emphasize on is when you're buying a property, let's say from a, a sourcing company or somebody, and you know, they charge a minimum fee of six grand or five grand or whatever. How are you gonna charge a minimum fee when in reality it's all about the return for the investor? I mean, think about it. 
If a return with like a two grand fee is making a 10% return, and all of a sudden it's now a six grand fee, that's not making almost any return for the investor on paper straight off the bat. Now again, I know a lot of people that sell deals, they have things like capital appreciation, it's in a really good area, there's schools close by, but none of this even matters really. I mean, of course, to a certain extent, these things matter, but at the end of the day, it's about what did the next door sell for? What can I get this property valued at? I mean, I've bought properties in the worst, worst, worst parts of Doncaster, where you tell people, you know, I bought property in New Ellington. They're like, oh, New Ellington, isn't that a really, really rough area? Shouldn't I not, like never buy there? But I mean, I bought there and I've done very, very well there. We purchased property for 40 grand and sold them for 80 grand. Why? Because when we purchased there, we realized the ones next door are selling. There is buyers in the market. Now, I'm not saying buying an area where, you know, there, there aren't any buyers there. It's just rentals and people aren't aspiring mm. to get off the rental ladder and to get into the buying mm. ladder and the property ladder themselves. Make sure you're buying in specific areas where, you know, there is a great demographic where people are aspiring to become homeowners themselves. So it's that kind of sweet spot that you've got to find. But again, after that sweet spot, initial sweet spot, then the rest of it, you know, we're not talking about buying it next to a mansion either where your rental income and sort of your return investment doesn't make sense either. So jumping back towards the numbers, we so far we have purchase price at £60,000. We have solicitor fees, including VAT at £686. We have the stamp duty at £1,800. And we have the sourcing fee and full management at £2,575. And this includes obviously sourcing the property and doing managing the entire refurbishment with our own in-house team. So what this comes to is full purchase price is now £65,061. Now this is all the cost involved to get the keys in our hand. Now for an investor's perspective, this is everything involved. You know, we've got the keys now. This is all that all the costs that he has incurred now. So that's sixty-five thousand and sixty-one pounds. Then we move on to the next level, which is the refurbishment. In this instance, the refurb is twenty-three thousand three hundred thirty-seven pounds, with two hundred fifty pounds put aside for the contingency aspect of things. And what that basically means is the water bill, the gas bill, and the electricity bill. Now, in this refurb that I just mentioned, includes also things like the council tax. Make sure this includes every single cost that you'll be incurring, and that will be your council tax while you're holding onto the property, water, gas, and electrics. Now, again, make sure all of these numbers are factored in with that refurb price. So, all in now, purchase price for the property so far was £65,061. With the refurb that we're spending now, £23,337 plus the £250, that gives you all in full cash invested at £88,648. Now realize I've included all of the costs right now. That's including sourcing fee and full management. So make sure you realize when somebody else is showing you a deal or you're an investor that you're gonna be buying a deal and they're saying like a six grand fee minimum, if you factor in that six grand on this return, you know, there is no more return on your investment. So make sure you again, as mentioned, you're factoring in every single penny on your cash invested. Now, so far, purchase price plus the refurb, you're in at £88,648. And this is a live deal that we've done. And I kind of want to also touch base on the refurb as well. Make sure the refurb that you're doing is a solid refurb. You can't be, you know, this is not the video to discuss refurbs, but you've got to make sure the EPC is up to a C, which includes external board insulation, new central heating, new electrics, plaster all around, bring the properties uplift to make sure there is enough uplift value there for a potential lender to come and see that you've done significant amounts of works to the property. Now again, this shouldn't really cost you that much. Just mention, we do full houses, new kitchen, new bathroom, everything for 20 to 25 grand. And you can find countless case studies of ours and we actually have the entire construction company that do it. But again, you guys can see the exact level of refurb that I'm describing there. And also what you guys need to realize is that this refurb number is very important to be accurate. Now our company actually provides a guaranteed refurb number. So this refurb number is guaranteed. You know, there is no more, oh, this garden needs to be cleaned another 500 pounds or so on and so forth. We understand what an investor expects or, or what somebody would expect to buy a property, refurbish it and then rent it. You know, we understand the, the, the level of the refurb and that the fact that, you know, we can't have all of a sudden saying, oh, we've got electricity, certificate that's not 200 pounds so on and so forth everything included that's the refurb number that you need to be factoring in so altogether cash invested being 88,648 pounds we then come to the fact that we now need to refinance the property to get it rented 
Now here is where majority of investors don't even factor in costs like this. And you've got to realize there is a mortgage product fee. Now what that means is basically when you're going to be getting a mortgage for the property, there is a certain amount that you'd also have to be paying that gets deducted from the amount that they give you based on the actual fee for getting that mortgage. So at most instances, it's around about 5% now. So it ranged previously anywhere between one to about 5%, but nowadays we're looking about sort of four, all the way up to around about even six, 7%. But generally speaking, the mortgage product fee is kind of added on with the actual interest payment as well. So let's say you've got like a 4% per month, uh, sorry, 4% a year interest only, which again, now that's not the base rate, but let's say you've got 4%, your mortgage product fee will let's say be around about sort of two, 3%, something like that. So altogether, that's like a six, 7% sort of uh, interest that you'll be paying roughly for the uh, duration of the mortgage that you have. Now, so example of this number here, so mortgage product fee at 5%, and that 5% is, is on the amount that you get lent. So end value for this property instance being 100,000 pounds, the end value being 100, that's 75% of 100 that they'll be giving to us, which is 75,000 pounds. So 5% of 75,000 pounds is 3,750 pounds. So that again is another cost that you guys have to be factoring in. So 3,750 pounds, that's the cost for the mortgage product fee. Then we've got a solicitor refinance fee. So when you're gonna actually be refinancing this property and you're getting this money back from the bank or from a lending or whatever, you're also gonna to have to have solicitors involved in getting this refinance carried out. So again, this is another cost that you have to factor in. So that's £597 for a refinancing fee as well there. And then again, we've got a tenant fine fee, another £500. So also you've got to realise that you're renting out this property. So to find a tenant on the property, you're most likely going to be giving it to an estate agency or a management company to get that tenant for you and rent it out. Now in this specific deal that I'm actually breaking through now, I'm referring to one on the street that you guys can find uh, all down on our YouTube channel. Um, this one, the investor himself decided to uh, put the property himself on open rent and he manages it himself. So there was no tenant fine fee in this instance as well. But again, it is something that you should factor in because at the end of the day, it generally is an expense. Now, your total refinance cost being the uh, product fee that you have, plus your solicitor refinancing cost, plus your tenant fine fee, comes in this instance to £4,847. Now that again is a cost. So what happens here is that now you get your full cash invested. So we have £88,648, which is purchase price, plus all your small other fees, including your sourcing fee, management fee, plus your refurb, including all the small other fees, including your holding costs like council tax bills and electrics, plus now all the costs that you'll be incurring to refinance property and get the tenant in there as well. So. £88,648 plus that cost there, which is £4,847, comes to £93,495. Now, basically, you're looking at now a 75% loan to value. So 75% of the £100,000 being £75,000, which again is the money the bank will lend to you. Now, the total money left in the deal, which is the full cash investor that we got now, which is £93,495, minus the 75,000 pounds comes to 18,495 pounds. Now that's all money left in the deal. Now if you think about it, this is the money left in the deal, including all of your costs. Now look at where we are now. Initially buying this property with a 25% down payment for a hundred grand property, you need to be putting down 25 grand. Plus, maybe you need to be spending a few grand, this and that, to get the property up to date if it's not completely done, which is what I was explaining at the beginning. You're putting down a significant amount of more money all of a sudden for a return that will be nowhere near as good as this. Now, again, I want to emphasize the fact that buying a property like this, there's two ways around it. Now, obviously, a lot of you may be thinking buying cash and then wanting to refinance before the six months time scale, you're limited to a pool of lenders that potentially won't lend the significant amount of value of the property. So what basically I mean by here is when you buy property cash and you do works for it, most lenders want to see that you've owned the property for longer than six months to give you a better end value. Now, there's actually a little trick around this way. It's not really a trick, but generally speaking, if you speak to some proper mortgage brokers, they'll explain to you, and this is how we basically refinance and keep cycling on to the next and next and next one, is that they look at purchase price plus refurb. Now again, I know I mentioned here that refurb is around about sort of 23,000 pounds, but generally speaking, this is shown with our own construction team there. 
So let's say you're bringing in a lender on the schedule of works, what they basically would see is five grand electrics, five grand central heating, so on and so forth. So they might actually see that that refurb is more like a 40 grand refurb or a 35,000 pound refurb. So what they then do is 60 grand plus that 35 or 40 grand is either 95 or 100 grand. Now what that basically means is that they will almost guarantee you give the loan to value on that figure there. So you don't even have to worry anymore. What if they down value it? What if this happens and that happens? They basically lend on purchase price plus the refurb price. They don't factor in all the other costs, but they bet lend on these two. Now, again, you may be thinking, wait a minute, how do I get the schedule of works to this specific number? As mentioned just a couple moments ago, you've got to actually you know, do a proper refurb. Now, if, for example, you're incredibly cheap on the refurb and our team, you know, we do full house refurbs for 20 something grand, you can still show that the amount of works done is something like five grand electrics, five grand to get the EPC up, you know, new central heating, new boiler, and so on and so forth. So they do actually still say, you know what? Yeah, you may have spent 20 something grand, but the schedule of works, you've put it as X amount, and these costs are feasible. Yeah, but you might have got it cheaper, you might have got, you know, your friend Bob to come and give you your electrics, but still speaking, coming on a refinance, you can say the properties had new electrics. New electrics around about five grand. And based on that, generally speaking, it wants to happen on these scheduled works numbers. Most lenders like Paragon, Aldermore, so on and so forth, will lend no problem on this. Now, again, I'm not going to get too much into that, but my main focus, my main point being, is that actually succeeding at buy to let property investment and building a substantial portfolio quickly with a small pot of cash really, really involves in understanding the fact that you need to gain value by buying it cash in the first place. And only once you've finished the refurb should you be looking at using leverage. Don't use leverage first because then you get stuck in the trap, if that makes any sense what I've just said. So going back through to the numbers, all in left money left in the deal being £18,495. We then have a interest only mortgage. So in this instance, the interest only mortgage will be 4.8%. So that's 4.8% a year on the amount of money that they've lent you. So 4.8% times by £75,000 is uh, sorry, 4.8% divided by £75,000 is £3,600. So in a year, you'll be paying £3,600 worth of interest only uh, interest for the servicing the debt that you have. So £3,600 divided by 12, so you can get the monthly cost that you'll be paying, will be £300 per calendar month. So every single month, you're going to be having an outgoing of £300 per calendar month, servicing the more money that you've now borrowed on the new loan to value of the property. Now you've got small other costs like your management fee, including VAT on rent of £655 per calendar month. And on the still, we've actually rented it for 675 so our projections, we went a little bit higher than that, which is great news. But again, so on the value that we've done here at 655 per calendar month rent, 12% including VAT is £78.60. So again, another cost that you have to there factor in. Then we have maintenance and voids. Now, although, yeah, you know, your property is brand new, completely done, so on and so forth, you should always be putting away money throughout for your maintenance and voids, just in case something does happen. Now, although something may not happen on the actual inside of the property, things like having a drain block because they flush wipes down the, down the toilet or they put a head of a mop down the toilet, which has happened before, although you can then take that money out of their deposit, sometimes if a tenant's good and it's a mistake, you're willing to take it on the hit. You know, it's always good to have money put aside for things like this. So then you've got things, costs like insurance, which in this instance is £22 per calendar month. And then you have in total, your cost being your insurance cost per calendar month, your maintenance cost and your management cost and your interest only mortgage payment. All of this in this instance comes to £463 and 60 pence. £463 and 60 pence are your outgoings per calendar month. Now, your rent at 655 per calendar month, minus your monthly outgoings, which is 463 pounds and 60 pence, leaves you with a profit of 191 pounds and 40 pence per calendar month. Now, again, as mentioned, with this specific deal, the profit's a little bit better. We're not paying management fees. You know, we're not paying that 12% cost there. The rent is 675. 191 pounds and 40 pence being the profit per calendar month. Timesing that by 12, finding out your yearly profit will be £2,296.80. So that's your entire profit that the investor will be making per year, minimum on this property investment. Now, £2,296.80 divided by your full cash invested, being the £18,495, gives us a 
percent return so that's a 12.41 percent roi on full cash invested for our investor now again i want to emphasize the fact that every deal varies i know this product fee is five percent which is quite high now this investor has got well over 10 properties in his portfolio so product fees vary depending on how many properties you hold in your portfolio and so on and so forth there's a lot of other factors that take in play in everything here but generally speaking this is roughly how you guys should be calculating your buy to let number. If you guys have enjoyed this video or found it informative in any way, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Take care guys, bye bye.